The buy rounds are here. A very exciting time in KFC Supercoach. Some big decisions to make this week. But before we do that, let's look back at round 11 and who was hot and who was cold. The hottest player of round 11 was James Sicily of the Hawks. Absolutely phenomenal in their win over St Kilda on Saturday. 43 disposals, 21 of those were intercepts, which we know the KFC Supercoach scorers love. Eight intercept marks. He had nearly 100 points at half time. Went a little bit quiet in the third quarter and then went bananas in the last quarter when the game was on the line. So you get more points for that. The craziest thing about it was he could have nearly scored 200, I think, if he didn't give away two 50 metre penalties, which cost him a lot of points. And then on top of all that, he's gone and got himself suspended for a week so he won't be there in round 12 when we need all players on deck for the first week of the buys so that weekend just had absolutely everything from James Sicily. Another fantastic game from Tim Taranto at the MCG yesterday against Port Adelaide. 33 disposals, which you can just about pencil in every single week. Seven tackles as well. And, of course, he added some goal kicking to uh, the resume this weekend. Four goals, one, and it could have nearly been five goals. That uh, one behind was touched right on the line, overturned on a goal review. So 147 points for him. That's his highest for the year. But he's been one of the best picks. He's number four, I think, in terms of popularity in KFC Supercoach. So a lot of us picked him at the start of the year. I think we can give ourselves a big pat on the back. And he's gone up 109,000, so just goes to show what a fantastic selection he's been this season. And another red-hot game from Jack McRae on the weekend, 145 points. He scored that now two weeks in a row, so we know what a great KFC Supercoach scorer he has been for his entire career, really. Uh, this year he's been a little bit off the boil and a little bit less popular because he's been playing more outside the centre square, but the good news for that is that with the latest round of dual position changes, which came in after lockout last night, he is now a mid-forward, so we can select him in the forward line. He's going to be a very interesting proposition. Do we jump on now? He's got a buy in a few weeks, which is a bit tricky, but he has a very low break even, so this might be the cheapest and really the only chance we get if we're going to get on Jack McRae. I really like the idea of having him in my forward line for the rest of the season. Who was cold this week? Rory Atkins, 102 points last week, just 28 this week up in Darwin. The conditions obviously didn't suit him, and he was playing a new role. Stuart Dew maybe moving him up to the half-forward line where he'd been in defence taking a lot of kick-ins, but just six disposals, and he got subbed out of the game as well. So we really need him to stay in for the buys. Uh, that's why a lot of people picked him 5,000 traded him in last week. So he did go up in value, but it's all about keeping his spot in the team for round 12. Having a pod, a point of difference pick can be fantastic when it comes off, but when it blows up, it can really hurt you because you cop the bad score and hardly anyone else does. And that's exactly what happened to me at the weekend with Tom Hawkins. I actually considered putting the VC on him because I thought they're playing down at Geelong, they're playing GWS, who have half their back line out injured. He could really go to town, and he kicked a goal early in the game and then basically didn't see him for the rest of the match. Finished with just that one goal, 10 disposals and 35 points. Absolute disaster. Hopefully he'll be a handy pick over the buys because Geelong have that round 13 buy. But uh, if you haven't got him, I wouldn't be picking Tom Hawkins off that performance. We've spoken about how well Will Ashcroft plays at the Gabba, but unfortunately when the Lions are on the road, he just doesn't seem to be able to produce that same kind of form. Only the 52 points at Adelaide Oval yesterday as the Lions went down to the Crows. Brisbane has the bye this week, and that makes this a really interesting selection. So he went up another 19 grand, and he's got a break-even of 109 when he comes back. The Brisbane does have a decent draw coming up after their bye. They play three games at the Gabba uh, in their next five, and they are against Sydney, Richmond, and West Coast. So you'd think he'd play pretty well against those teams and put up some of those big numbers that we've really enjoyed, but he won't be there this week. So have a look at your numbers. Do you need to make a move to make sure you get 18 players on the field this week? If you do, and you're a bit short like me, uh, he might be one we could consider moving on this week.